Hello, uh, my name is Ludovico Fischer. I'm the author of a book on React for Pragmatic Bookshelf called React for Real. But uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, render props. So I have to apologize because I sent the, the wrong word to, to Robert in the title. It's not render methods, but it's render props. Uh, so how did I come to the uh, subject? So uh, while I was writing my book, I noticed that uh, a lot of people have a few issues understanding Redux. So I'm um, sorry? Oh, scaling the font, yes. Yeah, so, uh, so everybody likes Redux, but sometimes the, uh, uh, the API is a bit difficult to understand. Uh, there's a few reasons for that. Uh, one of the reasons is the usage of so-called higher order components. So you have a function that uh, takes a component, in this case a component checkbox, and returns a new component. And um, inside the new component, uh, you will pass some props that you extract from the Redux store to the component that you pass to the connect function. So uh, it's already a bit complicated to explain. It's also a bit strange to read. So people have a problem understanding this. Uh, but a few days ago, I came through this post by Michael Jackson, who's the one of the creators of uh, React Router. So he's not uh, the singer. Right? And he says, uh, use a render prop. <laughs> And uh, he claims in this post that render props can replace uh, higher order components everywhere. So I said, well, maybe let's try this. Maybe it will help make uh, the React Redux API clearer. Uh, so I tried um, working uh, with um, render props. So wha what is a render prop? It's just a function that you pass to a component as a prop and this function tells the component what to render. Uh, so inside its own render method, the, the component just calls the, the render function that you pass as a prop. Uh, so uh, you, we can create a, a class called uh, connected, and this uh, has a render method. It takes the st Redux store from the context, well, it really doesn't matter where it takes it, but I'm, in this case, I, I take it from context like the re existing React Redux uh, connector, and then it uh, calls a render function that you pass as a prop uh, with a store state and store dispatch. So to go back to our previous example, uh, the actual uh, implementation, so I guess I have to increase this too, uh, would look like this using this uh, new uh, connected component. Uh, instead of creating a new component with, with the um, connect function from React Redux, we just use the uh, checkbox component directly. And then we place this connected component and we say when you render, uh, use the, the checkbox and uh, just pass the, the store state and the dispatch function as the props to, to the checkbox. Uh, so we can see that what's changed is now we have the configuration for the checkbox component doesn't happen inside some function in another file, so, but app happens at the call location. So um, in a sense, it's more transparent because you don't have to wonder uh, where does this uh, component take its props from. Uh, it, it used to be based on checkbox that needed uh, on change and checked, but it doesn't take them from anywhere, but it, it takes them from the store, but the fact that it takes them from the store comes from the implementation of connect function. So uh, here everything is explicit. Uh, but of course we have another problem that we have this connected component basically everywhere. Uh, so every time we want uh, to, to render a component that's connected to the store, we have to place it inside this connected uh, component. And also, uh, there's something that doesn't quite work right, because uh, 
usually in React you compose components and here you have a component and instead of having a child component, really, it takes a function that returns a child component. So uh, if you look, for instance, in the React Dev tools, it's it's not as clear what, what is going on. So maybe if you look at the source code, it's clear, but, but not um, in the in the dev tools. And also, uh, the final thing is that all these um, different composition methods have different behavior. Uh, so this is a guy called uh, Alex Krolik, and he made a page where he compares different um, composition methods. And you can see uh, whenever the color changes means the, the browser is redrawing uh, the tree. And you can see that depending on, on the method you choose, you can have a redraw or not. So uh, even though they should be functionally the same, they actually don't render the same way. Uh, so in the end, I'm not sure I'm going to pursue this and make this into a real library because right now the examples I've shown don't work. Uh, so <laughs> uh, there's, there's some implementation missing. But uh, I hope maybe this uh, has give you some idea. Maybe we can talk after the post and, and see what you think and whether you think it's something worth pursuing. So thanks.